So hi everyone. So welcome to my Turing webinar series, AI in biology. So the talk is about foundation models for single cell. And really the core idea of foundation model is that it is a system that can absorb common knowledges from large amount of data, such as text, such as images. And then once the model is trained, we can adapt this foundation model to many downstream tasks with none or very few data uh, for each specific task. And the motivation is quite clear. Uh, while texts are made up words, uh, cells can be characterized by genes. So this analogy inspires us to explore foundation model for single cell. We seem to have all the four components ready, and we are confident that we can start to build SGBD. SGBD consists of two steps. First, generative pre-training, and second, fine-tuning for downstream tasks. So once the pre-training is finished, we can take this base model and perform fine-tuning on some of the uh, downstream tasks. And the fine-tuning also contains lots of innovations in terms of the design of loss functions. But then we move ahead, we want to test uh, how good SGBD is for cell type annotations. And we find that SGBD does a much better job in uh, reporting accuracy, precision, recall, and uh, F1 values. Moving from cell type annotations, we actually find a very interesting phenomena for foundation model. It's called scaling law of foundation models. And similarly, not only SGBD outperform on tasks related to cells, we also uh, show good capacity on tasks related to genes. So um, that basically summarizes uh, most of the technical details and applications of SGBTs. However, I do want to emphasize some of the existing limitations because this model is really one of the very first attempts. How would the retrain model work if we have, let's say, not 30 millions, but 200 million cells. <laughs> so, so the pre-training, uh, as I mentioned, is a task with lots of, is with heavy resource. You know, uh, we also share some of the scripts to do pre-training. Um, the idea is, is generative pre-training. You know, you kind of mask certain amount of genes, you use the remaining genes to predict the mask genes. So the algorithms and uh, all the training scripts are shared. However, I want do want to point out that in order to have a decent pre-training model, very often you need to know many engineering tricks, just as many other deep learning models, right? You need to understand how to set the learning rate. You need to understand how to set the batch size. Uh, how do you do parallel computing between different GPUs, things like those set. We're actually collaborating with other Atlas providers to see, can we can we train a foundation model for them? You know. So the next question, going to a little bit a little bit more technical, is uh, would you uh, ex extend the the merits of GBT over BERT architectures, and why did you choose GBT? Yeah, very good question. So uh, we actually started with exploring BERT like model. We actually published SC former. Although we didn't train on 33 million cells. And then uh, we further train SGBT uh, because we believe that generative modeling is more powerful than simple representation learning. Like BERT is an encoder that basically learns the representation only. You know, it does not really learn to generate cells, therefore, it does not actually model uh, the data distribution. This is really the generative pre-training is so powerful. This is, again, correlating to uh, languages. Uh, you will find that ChatGPT is much more powerful than Bird from Google in terms of generating some novel response, right? Because it's generative. That's the power of generative AI. We have like 64 questions <laughs> left to answer. And the time is actually uh, coming to, already coming to the end. Uh, so again, Bo, thank you so much for uh, having a great talk.